The inspiration of the research was really the remarkable results of the clinical trial, HPTN052. In that clinical trial, uh, antiretroviral therapy was administered to HIV-infected individuals that were in a relationship with an uninfected partner, and they did this as a means to try to reduce HIV transmission to the uninfected partner. And in that study, they saw a 93% reduction in HIV transmission. With antiretroviral therapy, usually a patient is administered a cocktail of, you know, maybe two to three to four antiretroviral drugs, and usually the patient takes that daily. There are several, several drugs that are, are used in the clinic in patients, um, and, and the, the antiretroviral drugs that we use in our, in our study are currently used in the clinic with patients. Our results in which we saw reduced levels of cell-free HIV in both the blood and the cervical vaginal secretions um, during antiretroviral therapy, those were anticipated because um, the, the levels in, in women um, in blood and cervical vaginal secretions are correlated and it's been shown that antiretroviral therapy can reduce the levels both in the peripheral blood and cervical vaginal secretions. Um, what we were weren't anticipating were that um, when we looked at mice that were treated with, anti with antiretroviral therapy and had suppressed levels of cell-free virus both in the peripheral blood and cervical vaginal secretions that we would still find um, infected cells that were producing viral RNA both in the cervical vaginal secretions and in the female reproductive tract. We also weren't anticipating the dynamics of T-cell migration into the female reproductive tract that we saw shortly after HIV exposure. Um, we saw a very, a, an initial um, influx of CD4 T cells in the, into the female reproductive tract. And CD4 T cells are the primary target of HIV, um, and so it's really just adding fuel to the fire. And then later on, we saw an influx of CD8 T cells, which are the that cells will actually will go in and kill the virus-infected cells. So the studies that we did um, are really difficult to do in patients. Um, we looked at the uh, early events in HIV infection, and it's really difficult to identify acutely infected patients in the population because their symptoms really mimic um, those of other more common infectious diseases. Um, in addition, Studies in patients are really limited to, you know, analyses of peripheral blood, um, more easily obtained bodily fluid, and sometimes very small tissue biopsies. And so really to do the studies that we did, um, we needed to develop a suitable um, in vivo model in which we could perform these studies. So that's really uh, an intense um, area of investigation. We're really not sure right now. Um, it may be because our animals were not previously vaccinated to HIV or it may just reflect um, what naturally occurs in the female reproductive tract. It's going to take um, some very detailed, um, thought-out experiments in which we um, systematically look at the events in the female reproductive tract at several time points um, following HIV exposure. So the risks of transmission are really, um, you know, reflected in the results of HPTN 052 in which they saw an overall 93% uh, reduction in transmission. So our results really shouldn't change the way that clinicians are treating their patients in the, the clinic today. Um, it may have future implications in how we evaluate future prevention strategies. The take home message for patients is really um, by taking their antiretroviral therapy um, regularly um, that they're really helping prevent transmission to others. I think we've come a long way in the past 30 years. Um, it used to be that HIV was a death sentence, and now with antiretroviral therapy, people are living longer and longer and um, very productive lives. 
Um, I think the challenge really right now is finding a cure for HIV, and that's really an intense um, area of investigation, um, especially with a lot of investigators here at UNC. It's something that we're also actively involved in. Um, it, it's hopefully something that we can say, you know, in the foreseeable future um, that we've cured HIV, um, but we're not there yet. There's still really a lot of work ahead of us. To cure HIV in patients would really be um, one of the, the primary obstacles to curing infection are the, the persistence of infected cells um, despite suppression of viremia in patients during antiretroviral therapy. Um, so there are latently infected cells that exist in patients on suppressive antiretroviral therapy. And latently infected cells are more difficult to identify um, because they don't actively produce viral RNA. They don't produce any viral proteins. They're essentially hidden by the immune system. Um, and so what happens is that eventually something activates these cells and they start producing viral A RNA, um, virus particles, and they can seed the infection. And so it's really um, targeting, finding a way to target all of these cells in the body and destroying them is what's going to achieve a functional cure in patients. I don't think we're that close yet, um, but hopefully we'll definitely see that in the in the future. I mean, it really is an intense um, area of investigation. Um, here at UNC, we've just established a large care center. Um, so there really is a lot of effort going on in the field to, to obtain a cure. So in the future, what we'd really like to do um, is to determine um, how these persistently infected cells in the female reproductive tract really contribute to the overall um, HIV persistence in the body, what is their contribution. And then we'd also like to determine if um, the female reproductive tract, if we can find latently infected cells in su art suppressed patients, because those will really need to be targeted um, if we're going to achieve a functional cure in patients. Um, we'd also like to look at the role of the vaginal microbiome and its role in HIV uh, transmission and persistence as well. It's been shown that the, the vaginal microbiome um, and the composition of the different bacteria in, in the female reproductive tract um, can affect um, H, the, the transmission risk for vaginal transmission. Um, and so um, really being able to modulate that could um, perhaps have significant impact um, in terms of transmission and, and persistence.